So a pretty interesting boot review for you guys today. And this one is the Head Hammer 110. Now the Hammer is Head's free ride slash big mountain boot. Um, but there also is sort of a little brother version to this um, known as the Thrasher coming in two different flexes of an 80 or a 100. Um, the Thrasher is just a little bit more marketed towards park skiers and this head hammer being a little bit burlier, stiffer flexing, big mountain boot option. Basically everything on this boot is geared towards and has been developed for shock absorbing properties. Um, but first things first, uh, let's take a closer look at it. It is a three-piece design boot, so a full progressive flex tongue through the front. Um, but the interesting thing is Heads really put their own stamp on it. Um, they have a unique approach to the way they've constructed this boot. Um, and the one thing that I really like is basically off the buckles you can see there is plastic straps which go all the way across the progressive flex tongue and actually how the cuff is built to surround it. Um, you can see on the side of the cuff it actually comes in and encloses each side of the tongue um, so it actually gives it quite a lot of power and keeps a good amount of uh, lateral rigidity through the boot. Um, so from a construction standpoint it's already getting my tick of approval. Um, we have a 98mm last um, now this 98mm, even though that is quite a narrow last, isn't as constrictive as you would think. It's not as narrow as you'll find in a lot of other 98mm boots, but it does offer a great foot security. It feels nice and snug and secure, um, but just a great sort of shape through the boot. Um, the other thing that does include is Head's form fit technology. So it is one that is completely moldable through the shell. Um, so a little bit wider foot um, or any sort of lumps and bumps can mold into this boot quite easily. Um, the other thing, the first instinct when you put it on is it fits short. Um, it's something that may be a little bit abrupt for some people, um, but you're definitely going to notice your toes right up the front at first. Um, so really it fits very true to size. You've got to be used to that snug fit if you want to get into this one. Um, but again, that form fit can help settle that in. And the other thing of interest straight away from a construction standpoint is just how high they've mounted the cuff. Now you can see the hinge pivot points are mounted up around ankle height. Um, and this is what they're referring to as their ErgoTech 3 uh, or ErgoTech shell. Um, basically, from this mounting point, it is allowing a lot of leverage through the leg. Um, like again, I think it's geared towards big impacts. And they even have an elastomer built into the rivets, basically to dampen vibrations. All right, so let's take it apart and take a closer look at the liner. Now, the liner has been completely designed with nothing but shock absorbing in mind. Um, when we look at the material, the foam surrounding the whole foot is a really soft, squishy foam. Um, also a very unique idea built into the toe box. You can see all these bubbles or dimples built in. Now the idea behind that I guess is displacing the force. As your toes get slammed forward, um, it's absorbing that impact across a broader space. Um, in the tongue, they have added a gel material into the tongue uh, to sort of absorb some of that shock onto your shins. Um, there is a strap on the front of the tongue and the back of the liner to give you leverage to push your heel down right into the base of this liner. Um, over the top of the tongue, there is a nice instep window. Um, and I'm actually pretty hyped on this liner. I think it's got some good ideas. Um, in the base, they have included what they label as a shock absorbing footbed. Um, for whatever that's worth, maybe this blue material just has a little bit of shock absorbing properties. Um, and they have included actually quite a good bit of foam above the Achilles here. Does a really good job of giving some security to lock your heel down into the back of this line. Um, moving back onto the boot itself, um, you can see we have quite a broad solid 50 millimeter power strap. Um, in the base of the boot there is a full rubberized shock absorbing uh, boot board. Um, also we have one flex adjustment bolt built into the back if you do need to soften up the flex a little bit. 
Um, I just want to give you a closer look at the structure of the internal of this cup and tongue, how it interacts together. And that really plays a big part in how solid this boot feels flex-wise. You can see this structure coming in underneath the tongue, as well as this wrapping from the outside of the cuff over the top of the tongue. I think that is a really well thought out design with a three-piece boot. Now moving on from there, you can see we have three pretty solid buckles uh, built in that look quite durable. A fully rubberized sole with replaceable toe and heel. Uh, great for boot packing around, uh, grip in the car park. Um, also, we have quite an aggressive stance on this boot. We're looking at four degrees of ramp angle and 16 degrees of forward lean. Now, if I'm gonna start talking about any negatives on this boot, um, not that this type of boot is going to require it much anyway, um, but it does just lack a little bit of the ability of customization. Um, you can see on sort of all the buckle straps, on the power strap, um, on the rivets, we're lacking any ability to sort of make any changes to the setup. Um, but that's, you know, it's pretty minimal obviously. Um, also the liner, it just lacks a little bit of structure. You definitely do need these straps to sort of get you down in place in the heel because it sort of feels like it collapses a little bit with this really soft uh, foam built into the liner. Um, if it just had a little bit more structure built in through the back of the liner, you'd get better heel security. Um, and that heel security, I did mention that foam holding in at the Achilles above the heel is quite good, but it's more of like a side to side feel maybe. Um, great for anyone that does have sort of a wider heel and ankles, um, it's going to be perfect. Um, also, uh, the only other thing I can really mention is probably this strap that goes across the instep. And I just think that position wise, if it just came back maybe, I don't know, five millimeters, a bit more of an angle, I really think they'd be onto something pretty special here. Um, it feels to me just a little touch a little bit forward. Um, and if you could get some more 45 degree hold back, again, there goes the sort of heel security feeling like you're going to get that locked in feeling from it there. Um, but I love how it's designed. I love how this boot's put together. Um, I actually love how solid it feels and all the thought going into how shock absorbing this boot is. Um, it's going to be a really great option for someone who's skiing pretty hard, likes to jump off things, likes to hit the park. So overall, this is a boot that kicks a lot of goals. Um, they've really gone away with their R&D team. Um, they've spoken to their athletes, they've taken a lot of feedback, and they've just basically thrown everything in the kitchen sink at making this boot. So my verdict on the head hammer, well, I'm actually super impressed with this boot. Everything from the build quality, the last, the rigidity of their three-piece construction are all top-notch. Uh, also including form fit makes it very easy to mold and get some fit customization. Um, so overall impressed, a solid burly free ride boot. Also the stoke meter gets pretty burly. I'm going to give this one a rating of 7.5. Thanks guys, catch you in the next review.